I'm here today with Dr. Chris Phillips, forensics researcher at the University of Santiago de Compostela. Chris's research has focused on SNP analysis, population genetics, and ancestry inference. Chris, thank you for joining us today. You've been involved in developing a number of panels that can determine ancestry from the major populations as well as admixed populations. What's your strategy for actually selecting those SNPs? What we started with when we had a very small panel, which was based on capillary electrophoresis, was to try and choose um, markers which were most differentiated between the continents. And of course, that is possible with some markers. A small percentage of markers do show very strong differences. And they tend to be markers that uh, are linked to various uh, adaptive factors. So there's one marker that's very strongly differentiated that infers resistance to malaria. So it's a very, very good marker for African uh, descent. And uh, there's one for losing pigmentation in Europeans, which we use. We've used in forensic tests for a long time. And there's one that's, East Asia, that's fixed in East Asian populations, which again is, uh, is a good marker. But these are actually quite rare. Um, it's taken a while to build up panels that have a sufficient number of those types of markers. But now we've got here with uh, massively parallel sequencing, we've been able to make the multiplexes bigger. And we've been able to develop statistical uh, packages that allow us to differentiate uh, individuals uh, that don't have co-ancestry from people that do have co-ancestry. They're, they're admixed. They have parentage from different mm -hmm. uh, ancestral backgrounds. And now we're at the phase where we can start to introduce more interesting markers that show very, um, very good continental differences um, and actually differences at the population level, uh, populations within a continental group, okay. um, based on multiple alleles within the markers. So that's triallelic markers, mm -hmm. and some microhaplotypes, which we've been lucky enough to get access to from Ken Kidd's uh, collection of uh, markers. Now, I know that last year you and um, your 4 gen developed a new Global Aims um, panel using some of these things that you were just talking about. Yeah. What criteria do you use to determine whether a SNP is actually performing well within that multiplex? It can be on the basis of the performance in PCR. It can also be um, how, how good the alignments are. And what we've tried to do in the past, in the, the panel that you mentioned, is to make sure the collection of markers is very balanced. And by that I mean it gives an equal uh, differentiation of each of the five major groups, Native American, Oceanian, African, European, and East Asian. So okay. when you start to take a significant number of SNPs out because they're not good performers, it can upset the balance. So we've done a very careful job of trying to keep that balance, reassort the markers, so we can keep that. It's important when we're looking at co-ancestry, because if we have too many African markers compared to non-African markers, for instance, we would mm -hmm. overestimate the African contribution in African-American individuals that okay. have co-ancestry from Africa. So Chris, so what is your next step with the panel? Well, at the moment, we've got uh, a final set, which we're happy with. We're just assessing them with um, various criteria that we would use to evaluate the panel in a standard forensic context. So we have dilution series to test the sensitivity of the panel. We have mixtures. Mixtures are interesting because if you mix two individuals normally, it's quite difficult to distinguish them. But if you use markers that are ancestry informative, you can potentially establish the ancestry of the components of the mixture. And this is where the triallelics and the microhaplotypes cut mm -hmm. in because they're very good mixture detectors. Uh, the triallelics have multiple alleles. If you see three alleles in a pattern, we're looking at um, degraded DNA. And we would be very keen to, in the two labs that are doing the evaluation, uh, to look at real degraded DNA. So that's bones and teeth and uh, various samples that we have access to from missing person cases. We need to um, send this out to the labs that are collaborating in this project to test their own populations. So they've got a large collection of East Asian and uh, Pacific region laboratories that are part of the project who are going to type um, 50 samples of their own catch mm -hmm. uh, catchment populations. My last question today would be is, how do you actually see a panel like this, a, an ancestry panel, really fitting into forensics casework in the future? Well, I think it's, um, it's clear that there's been growing interest in uh, the ability to infer ancestry in an investigative context. So investigators, as soon as they realise that it's possible to, to give a reliable indication of ancestry in the individual, um, um, can see the advantages 
particularly when there's, uh, there's no database hit, and there's no investigative leads, if they can say, can say something concrete about the ancestry of the individual, it can provide uh, an alternative to eyewitness, or it can corroborate an eyewitness description. And we want to provide the investigators with a reliable handle on co-ancestry uh, when that's the case. So that's been certainly one of our main focuses. I think it has applications in uh, disaster victim identification and missing persons identification. Again, if you can establish the ancestry of uh, skeletal remains that are discovered, uh, you can provide some kind of indication of the, you know, something about the, the origins of the per person and, and provide some kind of indication of where to look for surviving relatives to identify the person. Wonderful. Well, Chris, thank you so much for sharing your thoughts with us today. It's certainly an exciting time to be in forensic DNA analysis today. Thank you. And to learn more, please visit us at thermofisher.com slash HID.